so good evening everyone on this occasion of science week 2022 vigyan sarvatra poojyate we are here for yet another webinar on science and traditional medicine with emphasis on research mind for ayurvedic scholar ayurveda known as evidence based medicine is what we all should focus in the next 25 years this shall only be possible by some quality research in the field of ayurveda and one such ob objective for achieving our goal is nurturing and fine tuning of research mindset it's indeed a delight to moderate this session wherein we have our director assistant director and research enthusiast joining us here today moving on let me have dr vc deep assistant director national ayurveda research institute for panchakarma cherujurthi for the official welcome address over to you sir namaskar vigyan sarvatra poojyate science is worshiped everywhere in malayalam one quotation is there vidyadhanam sarvadhanat pradhanam vidya vidya is important most important among all dhanas so here national science day is celebrating on 28th february since 1987 in remembrance with the nobel prize winner sir c v raman scott breaks this path breaking discovery of the raman effect in 1930 the program has been designed to improve india's youth and help them navigate into build a progressive net it is proposed to bring to the fire stories of people in science who made these achievements possible reinforce the commitment of the scientific community towards the economic and social development of the country present a inspiring futuristic mega science projects emb embarked by the nation and they highlight the work being done by our research and development organization from across the country that lead science and technology efforts on the road to 2047 so here national ayurveda research institute for panchakarma is also organizing a webinar related to this that most effective for young generation research model for ayurveda scholars in that manner we are arranging today this webinar many participants are there to hear it a warm welcome to everyone It is my great pleasure to welcome our director, Dr. D. Sudhakar Sir, for the webinar. He is uh, behind the, all the activities of our institute. Welcome, you, sir. I am so much pleased to see. Uh, uh, I am overwhelmed to welcome Dr. Uh, Pradipa P. Nair, who is presenting the topic. She is hardworking nature, and whatever. Uh, duty is allotted to her she will work with perfectly that is the main nature of dr pradipa this webinar also will give good insight to everybody <clears throat> i welcome dr pradeep kumar pp who is coordinating this webinar very nicely all most of the activities of the institute are coordinated by dr pradeep kumar in nice manner i welcome all the dignitaries all the participants of this webinar all over india for welcome you all thank you thank you very much thank you sir next to it may I request our most respected director sir dr d sudhagar for delivering the inaugural speech over to you sir okay thank you good evening to all of i feel great proud to say that this webinar is being organized by our institute on behalf of azadi ka amrut mahotsav vigyan sarvatra poojyate science week 2022 azadi ka amrut mahotsav is to celebrate and commemorate 75 years of independence and the glorious history of its people culture and achievements this mahotsav is dedicated to the people of india 
एंड फेल्ड बाय द स्पिरिट ऑफ आत्मनिर्भर भारत इंडिया रिच इन साइंस एंड नॉलेज ियस हिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल कल्चर डेटिंग बैक टू वेदिक पीरियड इंडियन सिस्टम ऑफ मेडिसिन सिंस द बिगिनिंग यूटिलाइज द वेल्थ ऑफ इंडिजीनियस हेल्थ टू मेक पोटेंट मेडिसिन फॉर सेवरल इनक्यूरेबल डिसीजेस एंड इवन परफॉर्म द फर्स्ट एवर प्लास्टिक सर्जरी इन द वर्ल्ड Ayurveda is a comprehensive scientific system of medicine built on a solid basic principles derived and developed through ancient wisdom robust clinical experiments which are documented in samhitas in the recent times formation of separate ayush ministry is a visionary initiative by the government of india to uplift the ayu system considering its scope in global health renowned ayurveda vaidyas in the past have been known across various generation like ashtavaidyas ashtavaidya moos padma shri raghavan tirumala part ps ps warrior padma shri krishna kumar ji etc the growth of ayush at health care sector education research medicine manufacturing in unparalleled ayush education in the past from gurukulam i have taken a great leap now with various reputed national institutes all india institute of ayurveda in our country running undergraduate diplomas msc ayurveda biology post graduate phd dedicated to produce quality of ayush professionals central council for research in ayurvedic sciences and apex organization under the ministry of ayush is a communicator to promote research for generating scientific evidence on quality based data safety and efficacy of formulations therapies and other interventions including basic principles we aim for aishman bharat by way of promoting better health through evidence based ayurvedic principles and practices our mission is to integrate ancient wisdom with modern technology and to bring ayurveda to the people ccrs is a contributed a dedicated public health support by providing ayurveda based approaches and solutions for the challenging raised by covid-19 ayush also have stepped into digitalization ayush hospitals management information system is now attached with various research councils helping in the better data documentation we have the recent development like prakriti assessment portal and namaste portal morbidity codes are also what meant meaning when we look into the research and development initiatives in covid 19 there are 70 research studies on ayurveda interventions for covid 19 and among these 29 studies were conducted by ccrias with all these words i am extremely delighted to announce our today's webinar this is an a science and a traditional medicine and the topic discussed here is a emphasis and research and mindset for ayurveda ayurvedic scholars i guarantee that session will be productive and worth precious time i wish i wish you all great success in your pursuits thank you thank you very much Uh, thank you, sir, for taking us on the developments in Ayush. Today's speaker, Dr. Pradibha P. Nair, is an upcoming researcher. She has published many articles in index journals. 
Her works in the field of basic research, a review paper is worth mentioning here. She tried to relate WADA with Vegas nerve functioning. We are extremely happy to have you, ma'am. Over to you now. Thank you, sir. Now, am I audible? Yes, madam. So at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Sudhagar, sir, Dr. Deep, sir, and Dr. Pradeep Kumar for your kind words and wishes, as well as for giving me an opportunity to uh, participate on this platform. And I believe that the audience today comprise of PG scholars, house surgeons, clinicians, and some of my colleagues from CCRAS. So I hope I do justice to your expectations. So let's start today's discussion. Let me share my slide. Interesting story. The story of a 51 year old man who was admitted at a hospital in 1956 at Massachusetts with a very aggressive malignant tumor somewhere in his abdomen. When the surgeons, they cut open his abdomen, to their surprise, they found number of such aggressive malignant tumors inside his abdomen. They removed the one which was causing him distress and pain and sutured him. And they sent him away to his home to die as nothing could be done in such a case. But 12 years later, a smiling man, the same person, the same fellow, he showed up in the emergency wing with a swollen gallbladder. The gallbladder was removed. But again, to the astonishment of the doctors present there, when they compared his medical records, they found no signs of any aggressive malignant tumors inside his abdomen. So all were very surprised. What has happened? But nobody gave a damn to it. All thought that it's his good luck. So let's send him home happy. But there are some crazy minds everywhere who think out of the box. And mind you, such crazy people whom we call them nuts, they are the ones who shall make actual difference in the real world. Einstein is one such an example. So such a person, a very young surgeon by name Steven Rosenberg was there. He was very curious and he was thinking about the mystery of this case. He was very inquisitive also. Much importantly, he had the guts to question yeah, yeah. what is this presentism? It is nothing but evaluating everything with presently available tools and techniques. Now, which is not value, eval, which we cannot evaluate with the present tools or techniques, they will not accept that. That is presentism. They will say no to everything which is not directly perceivable or testable with the available tools. Unfortunately, many of the scientists today believe in this presentism. What he did was he believed in naturalism. He wanted to know the mysteries of human body. He wanted to know what exactly, what is the reality happening in a human body? What is human physiology? this multiple complex physiologies happening inside the human body. So we should understand that this presentism is something which can stagnate a science and naturalism can always update and upgrade a science. Steven Rosenberg, he thought beyond presentism. What did he do? He tried to understand what happened in this man exactly. Thus, he isolated a very, a very important historical concept of cancer killing immune cells called the lymphokine activated killer cells. And this has been a very historic discovery in all future researches concerned with 
autoimmune disorders, cancer, and whatnot. Just trying to decode what Steven Rosenberg did. What was his mindset? It is very clear that he had great observation skills. Logic, he used logic and he had focus. Amongst all the chaos, what is happening around us, he was very focused to the problem in front of him. He was very curious and inquisitive. Inquisitive in the sense, questioning nature. He dared or he had the courage to question the current established theories and available techniques. So this is something which needs daring and courage and which is very essential in research. So with this background, I invite your attention to the topic research mindset for Ayurvedic scholars. I believe within this 40 to 45 minutes uh, discussion, we shall be able to understand what is so special about Ayurvedic sciences and Ayurvedic approach to healthcare. What are the different career choice with respect to Ayurvedic sciences? How to ingrain research mindset in clinicians? Similarly, and very importantly, how to ingrain clinician mindset and justice to Ayurvedic principles amongst Ayurvedic researchers. This is more important. And then how to collaborate? What is the importance of collaborating your ideas, your views, your techniques with peers, as well as scientists from interdisciplinary sciences as well? Why? Not for the sake of their sciences, but for the sake of innovations and research and update in our science, that is Ayurvedic sciences. We don't have to prove anything in front of others. We have to prove amongst ourselves and for the well-being of the patient community. That is how a research must go. And finally, after doing all this process, the outcomes of such research will be fruitful only if the patient and the community is benefited. There is no point in conducting research and publishing papers and telling a stop to that process. It becomes fruitile or the research is completed only when the benefit of that research reaches the patient community and population at large. So this is what I wish to convey through, the, through this discussion. We need to understand that wisdom or knowledge, whatever you call, it is on a continuum model. What is a continuum model? There is no demarcation. There is no distinction or you can't have a very clear cut idea of where we stand. It is a very blurred concept. At the two ends, first end, there is philosophy and the other end, there is empirical science or experimental science. Philosophy is also a way to understand things, to seek wisdom, but the outcomes or the endpoints are not defined. There is no endpoint. You can gain wisdom until you die and you can pass on the wisdom. That is the principle of philosophical ideas. And not only that, it is having great responsibility to correct to modify the community and behaviors and patient outcomes. That is the responsible way of philosophy. Coming to empirical sciences or experimental sciences, it is based on laws, on theories, on methodologies. It is very specific, but at times what happens is when you be that specific, when you be that sensitive, when you be so rigorous in your methods, it is difficult to extrapolate the outcomes, to generalize the outcomes. So in such cases, there are disadvantages in empirical methods or experimental methods. Now, coming to a midway between philosophy and empirical science, there is the philosophical science, where there are philosophical methods of seeking knowledge and then philosophy-driven experimental methods 
to do research and update that is a very crucial point of existence so philosophical science i repeat has contributions from both philosophy and it also has experimental methods or techniques which are really evolved from philosophical methods ayurveda is a philosophical science it is having a, a huge amount of philosophical data and conceptions and ideas it is now there are something very common in philosophical sciences such as ayurveda as well as empirical sciences doing conceptual analysis what are the different concepts told here and there scattered trying to apply logic trying to apply reasoning arguing based on that reasoning and logic ascertaining finally that okay after all this arguments this is the theory that i have formulated this is common in philosophical science as well as empirical or experimental science but benefit of philosophical science is having open mindedness a nature of seeking nothing can be spoon fed that idea comes from philosophy knowledge has to be sought interested people has to have to come together to seek knowledge nobody can be spoon fed there is freedom there is responsibility there is ethics and always there is patient driven outcomes outcomes are always related to patients their well being community based outcomes the opinions of patients as well as the researcher is counted perspective of the patient as well as the researcher is counted that is the beauty of philosophical sciences where in all these criteria empirical science or experimental science is failing as you see as all the samhitas all the shastras are available these are documented books materials or contents books and documentations now why this philosophical foundation is important for research the fundamental principles which have been told in ayurvedic sciences are connected or deep rooted with philosophical thinking when they say regarding pancha mahabhuta siddhanta they are teaching us that whether things are living or non living they have common characterization at the elemental level there are commonalities one can influence the other there is a give and take between the macrocosm and the microcosm between the environment and the body then next they teach us samanya vishesha siddhanta sarvada sarvabhavanam samanyam vruddhi karanam dravya samanya tulya arthadahi samanya karma samanya samanyam ekatva karam guna samanya so later they tell us regarding the samanya vishesha the give and take possibilities between and regarding what caused the disruption what caused the dysfunction why dhatus are in the vishama avastha this causal association is there only because philosophical sciences have this foundation which is not there in empirical methods in experimental sciences this makes ayurveda and such philosophical sciences unique we are into understanding basic, basic disruption at basic levels that this is the way how they give us clarifications so now coming to the empirical part or the experimental part in ayurvedic sciences as per bagel sir in a very beautiful editorial he has written to ayu uh, the journal ayu he has told that always research is a transition from wisdom to wisdom once there is a wisdom then you deduce a data from that again you convert the data into information you test you retest and you create a new wisdom so this is always a transition a flow of wisdom to wisdom this is explained in different concept for example the existence of sat and asat truth and falsehood and how to test them with many vada margas with many pramanas these are the way you test what is there what is existing and what is not existing 
There are 44 Vada Margas where hypothesis, postulations, research questions, debates, discussions, and whatnot. They are teaching us how to do research and update yourself. That is the epistemological part of a philosophical science. Then there are testing tools. There is Pratyaksha, which is presentism, using all the available resources, available tools and techniques to perceive what is there. Then there is deductive inference where you start correlating things. There is causal association, there is correlational association. What is the type of exact association between two things? That is Anumana. There is Yukti where along with Pratyaksha and Anumana, you add on your logic, focus and reasoning to deduce facts. Then there is Aptobadesha, which are established theories and observations. But mind you, many people, they take Aptobadesha at face value. They feel that Apta, Shishta, Vibuddha, Tesham, Vakyam, Asamshayam, Satyam, etc. That is not questionable. What is told is told. It is there. But again, they have clarified. This is not, this thing is not only Aptobadesha. Some, there is something else which is Aptobadesha. It is nothing. But again, testing. Parikshikaihi Pranitam which is Loka Nugrahartha, which is good for the community. If you feel it is good for the community, it is Kalyanartha, Anugrahartha, then you can do testing and retesting. But it must be Shishta Anugada. That is, it must be reasonable to your peers who are available there. You, it should be reasonable to them. You show them your evidence. Then that is also Apta. That is also Agama. Again, Acharyas have they have again given great concern to doing science in a scientific way, doing research and updating your science. Never try to stagnate your science feeling that it should not be tested. There are different ways to improve your knowledge. Satata Adhyayanam, which is told in Buddhi Medha Karyogana, explained by Shushruta, it has told regarding rigorous literature reviews and updation. You are updating your knowledge based on what is available at that point of time. Then hypothesis generation through different vadas. Very importantly, paratantravalokanam, collaboration with available prominent interdisciplines, then only the system will grow. Be open-minded to do paratantra avalokanam, to collaborate with others. Then doing tadvidya sambhashas as we are doing lately. Now coming to the point, what is the role of clinician? where he should contribute to the science. Clinicians should come together in focus groups, doing focus group discussions and generate clinical practice guidelines. They should debate, they should discuss regarding what all things are available in the community. What are the prevalent conditions which is acceptable to your principles? And we have, they have to take initiative to create clinically pra clinical practice guidelines. If you're identifying kushta, there are different types of kushta. So every person should understand all these different types and they should appreciate them in their clinics. That is the way how we can develop clinical practice guidelines. We have to identify clinically relevant topics. For example, inflammation or chronic inflammation which is present in many conditions, which is common to many disorders. Identifying such things and correlating or translating it into your understanding. How you can manage such inflammatory changes, which is very personalized, which is different from person to person. How you can address that and how you can substantiate your facts and deliver the results and show the community that you have answers to such difficult conditions or difficult uh, phenomena, which is very common in different disorders. Address the personalized immunity or personalized concept of immune mechanisms with your science and scientific principles. Select such clinically relevant topics, do research in that topics and extrapolate your results to the community. Also, we have to have observation skills and documentation. A clinician should always document and what all observations he has made on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Why? At times he might feel that there are some clinical pearls, there are very important findings which need to be reported. 
a person can only report if he regularly documents case reporting is done of only such very relevant very crucial new information on new diseases or new treating strategies something which has not been done until now so such things has to be reported by clinicians ayurvedic clinicians they have to come forward for this they have to develop good documentation skills you might be sitting in a room you might be having only a pen and a paper yet you can document you might be having a very full blown hospital you have you might be having different sections and you have to document so documentation skills of whatever things you try in patients and you find the results is very crucial for clinicians the role of clinician is very important as i told you for research such clinicians should be sensitized for reporting there are many guidelines available care guidelines consort guidelines for reporting trials straw guidelines for uh, documenting your observations or observatory type of studies until we are sensitized with such guidelines we won't have the idea or the courage to report what you find so clinicians have to be updated with such these guidelines are universal to every science it is not for any particular science it is universal for every field of science and research so clinicians should be sensitized with such type of guidelines and the, the clinicians should open up with their observations in the form of opinions these are the people who should be opinionated not the researchers alone the clinicians should share their opinions their perspectives and do or publish papers like discussion papers etc those will give the actual leads because these are the people who are always in contact with the patients so all the ayurvedic physicians or clinicians have this capability and they have to share their experiences and opinions that will only give lead to researchers and for transparency and accountability we have to report at times there might be some negative results for example you did a treatment you thought it was this particular condition and you gave virechana or you gave nasya or you gave any other procedure or you gave some shamana aushadas but it backfired you didn't get the result not only that there was some side effect or there was some adverse event that also should be reported then only a science will get updated we have a tendency to publish only positive results no at clinicians level such crucial observations can be path breaking it can update science people can think beyond how to okay what is the way in which you can counter that occurrence what went wrong such things can be understood then only a science will grow this is such an example this case report was done by my colleague dr krishna kumar he reported a case of meniere's disease a patient who had meniere's disease and vairechnika nasya was done in that person in that patient but the patient developed some unusual form of headache this was reported why was this reported so that other clinicians other ayurvedic physicians they can take care they can understand and they can be more observant while doing such types of procedures which are tikshna in nature or any procedure in a matter of fact they can be more careful so such type of reporting this reporting is one of its kind as far as i understand so such type of reportings also must be there to update and upgrade our science since we are not reporting such crucial findings people or the science, the so called scientific community out there they feel that if something can have no side effect no papers are getting published on any uh, side effects or adverse events whether it can have an effect that is also there so whatever things is happening in front of you have courage have the knowledge of reporting such events this also a clinician should come forward now when a clinician understands how he has to have that mindset of documentation of sharing experiences of discussing of giving opinions then he is upgraded from a clinician to a clinician researcher or a scientist practitioner or a clinical scientist this is very very crucial 
a clinician alone or a researcher alone does not count a clinical scientist or a clinician researcher will only update and upgrade a science because he is the person who knows what is the relevant topic what the patients are suffering how many patients are suffering and he has the knowledge he has the idea how to formulate a protocol so that the patient specific outcomes are received a person who has no expertise in clinics he is only a researcher he is only doing literature works and he is only compiling data he doesn't know he can't formulate a protocol only a clinician researcher can formulate patient specific patient driven outcomes which will be very pro to the science in ayurveda there are advantages and disadvantages at times a clinician in you will wake up and we will think that okay this is not the way this is not the appropriate methodology my patient is suffering i should not do that we might be skewed at that time a researcher in, in you says we are doing research we shall definitely respect the patient we are responsible we are ethical we will make sure that the person receives the outcome at the same time we need methodology we need to adhere to methodology and thus a midway comes sarva dharmeshu madhyamam that midway will come where there is patient responsibility there is patient specific outcomes there are there in our minds there is ethics at the same time there is research there is methodology for this a good collaborative or collaboration team will help a collaboration team where there is a clinician researcher there is a good biomedical researcher there is a good biomedical statistician there are some interdisciplinary scientist for translational values that is a very good collaboration team and that will definitely upgrade our ayurvedic sciences many people have developed some modified research methodologies we say that okay randomized clinical trials are the gold standard double blinding is the gold standard but as far as philosophical sciences are considered that is not at all the case we need our own methodologies because we have our own principles so who and such organizations are trying to develop protocols like black box design n of 1 trial where the perspective of the patient is counted not only the researcher but all these are evolving concepts because these are not coined or developed by ayurvedic researchers or ayurvedic clinician researchers these are done by someone else we have to develop our own methods because we are the one who are knowing our theoretical framework our principles only we can help us so knowing our own methods and theoretical framework and then we don't have to fit into something to explain something to others to prove ourselves to others we don't need to do that we need to prove ourselves and the patient community for that we have to help the researchers who is who are working on this research methodologies so that we can develop our own research methodologies now comes the role of a researcher when you are a researcher now i am talking to the researcher in you there is two type of research basic research fundamental research and then there is experimental and applied research both these should coexist both these should they should be there together not basic research first and then experimental research no all these should go together and they should coexist why are you doing basic research that is for your own science for the updation and standardization of your own techniques based on the current situation we are living in 2022 so updating and standardizing our techniques is required and for that we need basic fundamental research where we ask basic questions with translational value very basic questions after all doing all the bms and pg and everything again we question our understanding of vata dosha again we question our understanding of basti karma again we question our understanding of all the diseases which have been told in the classics asking again basic questions why to revalidate them to the current situation to the current situ uh, scenario 
uh, we are sure that they uh, all the acharyas have done this at their time they are expecting us to do this at our times and we should come forward we should always try to develop and validate our own diagnostic tools to diagnose kushta to diagnose yes yes sir am i audible am i audible carry on yes yes audible yes okay so validation of such tools will have will create uniformity in us a person in kerala or a person in rajasthan can diagnose conditions similarly such clinically relevant diagnostic tools based on our understanding based on our principles should be developed and validated for this clinician researchers should associate with biostatisticians systems biology approach that is another basic fundamental research now we understand that preclinical trials or animal trials they have their own limitations we are talking about a complex human being who is having multiple complex physiology inside him one system is totally dependent on another system respiratory system is dependent on your gastrointestinal system gastrointestinal system is dependent on your central nervous system everything is dependent nothing is different so you have to understand that you are treating the person you are not treating any specific condition when you are doing research in rheumatoid arthritis you are selecting a biomarker any inflammatory biomarker as your outcome and then you get result also but the patient is not satisfied the patient is the quality of life of the patient has not improved only the marker level some changes have been observed that is not good research there must be such markers as an add on outcomes we have to concentrate on the patient specific outcomes on the system biology approach where you consider the whole person his internal connections his problems his disease causations separately that is that data will only help to extrapolate your results to the population that is the same thing with personalized medicine everything is personalized my lifestyle uh, my immune mechanisms my habits my behavior my personality everything is personalized so are my diseases so are my pathological conditions so i need personalized treatment i need to be attended we cannot conduct generalized trials like uh, because we cannot generally generate commonality in people there is always difference so understanding this is basic research understanding this is fundamental research and here ayurveda is having lots and lots of scope ayurveda is having the caliber to explain what is personalized immune mechanisms what is personalized physiology not one size it won't fit for all we need to have tailors we need to have our own measures to treat ourselves this i have already explained regarding the inflammation theory of all diseases this is also basic research where prakriti has been extensively funded and extensively the research are being carried for prakriti highlighting the personalized immune mechanisms this is fundamental research again the gut microbiome a whole world inside your body gut microbiome different biodiversities inside your gut that is also stratified based on leads from prakriti this is also another method where in diseases like pandemics like covid 19 you try to tell the community that although the disease is same it is a pandemic but you need personalized care personalized treatment protocols because covid 19 will not manifest the same way in all individuals people can have different 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 symptoms to different physiological systems so giving that idea this is also a type of basic fundamental type of research this is another type of research where the vata dosha activity is studied based on some markers or some activities which is going on in the body for example the vagus nerve activity it is a very famous parasympathetic activity nerve inside your body which is functioning in a connectome level the vagus nerve is connecting your intestine with your brain it is a long running nerve it is telling what all problems it is happening inside the gut inside your body it is conveying it to the brain and it is carrying reverse messages how it can be corrected so such important 
areas whether these activities are correlatable to our concepts this type of basic research will give leads will give data which can be converted or translated for existing disorders that is the importance if vata dosha activity can be compared to correlated to something which is existent now or which is understood now then definitely vata dosha chikitsa vata dosha chikitsa sutras can be absorbed can be uh, established in existing disorders which is present in this uh, century so that is why these translations are important to so as so that we can have a good say in health policies we can say that we are having the answers for your problems as well that is how we can enter into health policies that is the importance of basic research similarly the concepts of reverse pharmacology where from bedside we are taking leads to the bench it is not the other way until now it was the reverse from the laboratories from the discussions and all we used to take leads and then we should we will go to the bedside but instead from the bedside what all effectiveness you are observing from your practice the clinicians what they are observing we are taking leads from that and then those formulations and those procedures are analyzed to know what exactly in what way are we contributing the disease got subsided in what way it is subsiding we can have answers in a scientific way such approaches is very crucial for philosophical sciences to update it to the current situation then there is ethnopharmacology where certain type of medicaments and formulations which are very running in traditions in traditional groups in ethnic communities or cultures such things we are going and we are understanding their method we are documenting them and we are taking leads for further research that is also very important part of basic research then there is pharmaco epidemiology where the results like you are giving medicine you are giving medicine for one month for two months for three months what is the impact of such duration of uh, the medicines that we are giving in the community how many people are adopting such ayurvedic treatments how many people are getting benefited with ayurvedic treatments whether any side effects or adverse events are observed in the community taking data from the community and again updating our science is also crucial so such pharmaco epidemiological studies uh, fortunately ccrs is taking such uh, pharmaco epidemiological studies to document data from the community that is also very important that is that also comes under basic and fundamental researches now coming to the second type of research experimental or uh, clinical trials but mind you it must always have translational value first we were th taught that evidence based research is important but now people say there are many papers published where they say practice based clinical trials that is from bedside to bench must be there always a clinician should take the lead he should say that this is the best practice we should do research here this is the relevant area this is the appropriate treatment measure which is giving result that is practiced based clinical trials the clinician researcher in you should come forward should give data from the bedside this will revalidate the facts to the current century the facts which have been told which have been documented which have been observed in the, those centuries in those eras they need revalidation to the existing diseases existing conditions in the community for that we need appropriate research designs we have to develop such research designs and don't go behind drugs and formulations whether this drug is good for diabetes whether this drug is good for that but stoulia obesity or hypercholesteremia there is no point in doing ayurvedic researches in that area what you have to do it is to upgrade your science not other science so how to modulate doses of your existing medicines how to modulate duration of your existing treatment how you can make it cost effective how you can make it feasible what are the probable side effects that may arise such must be your outcome measures not the effectiveness of particular drug in a particular condition 
you have if you have to improve your science you have to keep outcome measures depending totally on your principles the indication of the particular formulation side effects which can which may be observed duration whether i should give it for this duration or this duration whether this treatment which is uh, we are giving whether it is cost effective whether people can afford such things must be the outcome measures for for your clinical trials that is the meaning of having translational value and updation of your science so tradition the translational research becomes fruitful only when there is this translational value from basic research to clinical system and beyond what is this beyond the result of your research must reflect in the community after your research when you have so much fund you have lots of expenditure you have to adopt best healthcare practices then only your research is complete that is the concept called loka anugrahartha or loka kalyanartha when the philosophy has told us so that means your research is fruitful or only when the results are it has to be generalized to the community your healthcare practices must be revised based on your research outcomes again it must be cost effective and feasible approachable now a great deficit is regarding the epidemiology we don't have ayurvedic epidemiological data what data we are having is based on the contemporary knowledge what are the existing conditions diseases health or the uh, what, what are the uh, causative factors all this is depending on contemporary knowledge we are having the epidemiological data based on our parameters what is important for us in a patient The, those parameters and their epidemiological data must be surveyed in the population you must know in this particular area what is the condition of agni in this particular area what is the most prevalent prakriti in this particular area or community how the kosta of people are behaving what are the lifestyles are they taking any vata vyadi nidana causative factors whether their lifestyles are pro vata vyadi such epidemiological data which is important for ayurvedic physicians in their assessment that data should be collected through surveys and then only we can develop preventive treatment strategies and apply in the community that is also a, an important translational value of your research yes for understanding the health and disease in the current century to know the patterns to correlate it with the data which is there in your textbooks to develop patient oriented research to improve the standards in care and finally to apply that research to the population for the better patient outcome this is very important this is having translational value and this is the research which we need in this time at this time further in academic levels students or bms scholars they must be taught in uh, in ways which are pro ayurveda we we should not adopt contemporary style teaching we should adopt those methods which are told in ayurvedic sciences debates discussions opinions perspectives that type of learning must be there at the bms level students must be told to test to experiment to question what is there in the sciences they must have you we must develop research interest in them so that they can do good for the science for the development of the science also some contemporary skills like computer skills language proficiency that also counts scientific writing skills it is also very important and that must be this things must be taught must be trained at academic levels we can't waste time any more so we have to start right when the students approach us so teachers if at all they are listening or any such policy makers they should take this as a great responsibility and bring change in the curriculum and above all after all those discussions what i have to say is we should not miss the essential principles 
the most essential principle of philosophical science like ayurveda is human to human interaction patient to physician interaction don't standardize that much or don't do such rigorous methodology where this concept is lost spiritual yantra automated shirodhara yantra such things when we adopt more this human interactions the interaction of touch the interaction of consoling which is also the duty of a clinician is lost so such principles which are very unique to the philosophical sciences of ayurveda should not be lost behind research so keeping such essential elements we need to move further to summarize this class what we need is good observation skills logic and reasoning focus courage to question inquisitiveness open mindedness to discuss to accept in an unbiased way the findings that you get from research to preserve the principles ayurvedic principles and to show empathy to the stakeholders this is the philosophical foundation of ayurveda we should show empathy along with research we should have perfect collaboration a good team to do research a good clinician clinician researcher a good biomedical statistician a good interdisciplinary scientist a good scientific writing professional should come together for the good of ayurvedic sciences and community publishing of your results being transparent being open to what you have done what you have observed is also very important to conclude we need a toddler mindset for research we have seen our children very curious about small small things in life they need to know everything they need reason for everything that attitude must be there throughout our careers then only the research will be fruitful for the community at large so that's all i wish to say and also i would like to say that whatever i have told here i have been inspired by many talks i have attended many scientific sessions and i have talked to my friends my peers uh, read some articles and based on that what all things i have received i have conveyed to you and i acknowledge each and every one of them and i cite all the references for this presentation thank you so much